he was working in uh, the maternity ward at that time, and, um, and I was doing a clinical pastoral education. Yo estaba haciendo una educación pastoral ahí en Parkland. And I'll never forget how he assisted me in sharing compassion and leading parents who have just experienced tragedy through the grieving process. Nunca voy a olvidar como él me capacitó como ayudar padres que acaban de pasar por una tragedia. And we developed a friendship then. Desarrollamos un uh, una amistad ahí, and I have really appreciated him, respected him, and, and loved him ever since. Y tengo mucho respeto, admiración y amor por, por él. He has served churches in the Rio Grande Conference. He served churches in the North Texas Conference. Am I missing any other conferences? Just North Texas and Rio Grande. Rio Grande and in, in North Texas. Uh, when I post pictures of him on Facebook, I often put the caption with the man, the myth, and the legend. <laughs> and people always comment, you got that right. And so, will y'all give a welcome to our speaker of the day, the man, the myth, no, and the no. legend. El leyendo es mi amigo uh, Isabel Chabelo Gómez. Let us welcome him. Uh, thank you. great appreciation for Owen. What I remember, the conversation, the meeting that I remember most is uh, around 2000. We were both attending a, a Christmas uh, cantata or something at the Episcopal Church. And uh, he told me, that he was going to start a new church. And he was asking, trying to find out, how do you start a new church? And he said he ran into an evangelist and asked him, how do you start a new church? And the evangelist told him, he said, three things. You got to do three things. Number one, Pray. Number two, pray. <laughs> Number three, pray. Amen. I remember visiting Owen when he was in the, in the housing project, beginning that ministry, and he invited me to come and speak to the group that he was gathering at that time. As I remember, it was about 10 children and about five adults. And I said, I don't know where this is gonna go. <laughs> but what a job, what a great ministry. Fundacion uh, de uh, Cristo, uh, and with Owen, now with uh, Amy. Uh, it's been a blessing. I so much admire Owen. I, I ran into Owen again regularly. We meet here and there. Uh, a couple of months, well, in December, early December, but in November, I uh, had taken some tests. I'm sorry if I get a little sentimental here, but uh, it's the, uh, uh, having some issues, the doctors me diagnosticaron que tenía cáncer y que uh, me quedaban unos seis meses. Este, uh, and I was diagnosed with cancer and that I had about six months. 
that was back in in November, and uh, the, one of the doctors asked me, me preguntó la doctora, what would you like to do? Like, uh, you know, don't wait too long. No te esperes mucho tiempo. At the moment, I couldn't think of anything. Este, I didn't want to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to go on a long trip. No quería ir en un viaje largo. I like to sleep in my own bed. Uh, so I don't want to do anything, but after thinking a while, después de pensarlo bien, más bien, dije, you know, que I would like to tell, share with you los pastores de la North Texas Conference en el Ministerio Hispano, algo de la conferencia Río Grande. Porque yo... Amo, I love the Rio Grande Conference. I don't know what your feelings are de la Conferencia North Texas. I don't know if you love the conference. Pero I love the Rio Grande. The North Texas Conference, la Conferencia del de, de Norte de Texas, cubre aquí Dallas y alrededor y Armando que está en Fort Worth es la Central Texas y en Houston está la Texas Conference y en, uh, en, en El Paso y del río es la the, the West Texas Conference en, en, hay cinco there are five conferences in Texas, geographical conferences. You belong to the North Texas Conference. I belong, todo mi ministerio, to the Rio Grande Conference. The Rio Grande Conference, not geographical, no era geográfica. Era una conferencia de idioma. It was a language conference. And the Rio Grande covered all of Texas and New Mexico. So uh, the bishop de la conferencia was in San Antonio. Pero a mí me tocó servir iglesias en Nuevo México, Tecamcari, en Del Rio, en la frontera, en El Paso, en Houston, todo in the in the conferencia Rio Grande. So we were spread out, estábamos esparramados, sobre todo el estado de Texas y Nuevo México. How did we keep together? How did we work together? Como trabajamos juntos y um, una de las razones era que uh, teníamos Where's the blue himno? Give me that blue himno. Teníamos un himnario. Y este era nuestro himnario. This was our hymnal in the Rio Grande Campus. All of my ministry was in the Rio Grande Conference and this was our hymnal. So it didn't matter, you know, si estabas allá en, en uh, El Paso, Texas, or in Houston, or in Dallas, we all sang from the same hymnal. Now, todo ha cambiado. Ahora we don't even use hymnals anymore. You know, now everything is up there. I don't know este, me imagino, I imagine that every church has some hymns and they put up on the screen. But I don't know if there's a, a hymnal somewhere that, that you can pick your Methodist hymns. Uh, the beautiful Coritos songs that we sang this morning, 
I don't know if they're in the hymnal, pero we sang from the Methodist hymnal. Este himnario no lo produjo la iglesia metodista. This hymnal was not produced by the Methodist Church. The, the, the leader of the Rio Grande Conference, Dr. Alfredo Nanez, knew that we needed a hymnal and he tried to get a hymnal for the Hispanic ministry. But the Methodist Church wasn't able to, to, to have a hymnal for Hispanic ministries. So he had to have the Baptists, los Bautistas, produce the first <laughs> Methodist hymnal for the Rio Grande Conference. That's kind of funny. <laughs> had to be for the Baptists. Pero later on, este, uh, the Methodist Church decided, you know what, I, there is Hispanic ministry and we need to recognize, reconocer ministerio hispano and we need a, a hymnal for the Hispanic ministry. Remembering que Rio Grande was a language conference. So we worship in Spanish. La adoración de nosotros, la iglesia era todo en español. La conferencia era, uh, conferencia anual, todo en español. We had to translate for the bishop so that he could understand what we were doing in the, in the Rio Grande conference. So, este, uh, I still keep in touch with people from the Rio Grande Conference. I love the Rio Grande Conference. I talk to people in El Paso. Hablo con la gente del Paso. Not much going on in Ministerio Hispano. I talk to people in San Antonio. Not much going on in San Antonio, Ministerio Hispano. I talk to people in Houston. Not much going on in Ministerio Hispano. I talk to people in Del Rio. Not much going on. And I said, pero in the North Texas Conference, we got Hispanic ministry. En esta conferencia de la North Texas, el ministerio hispano está alive and well. And I talked to Armando, Central Texas. Not much going on in Central Texas. Pero the North Texas, hay vida, hay obra, hay pastores, hay movimiento. Este, uh, that makes me very happy. Este, yo uh, admiro uh, lo que está pasando aquí en, en el North Texas Conference. Uh, desde que hace como seis años, when did we merge? About six years ago, este, la, las iglesias se, se juntaron las conferencias aquí en, en North Texas, en Texas, en West Texas, en Central Texas. Y, en, y uh, aquí en, en, en North Texas es donde hay más actividad de la, en el ministerio hispano. Pero lo que yo quería... Uh, Compartir, what I wanted to share is that before North Texas Hispanic ministry, Rio Grande was already here. La iglesia en la cual yo me crié, church I grew up in, 
Today we are, we are Casa Emanuel. Era antes Heinz, era antes Emanuel. Was established in 1924. My church, the one that I grew up in, you know, uh, was started in 1924, Reverendo Genio Vidauri, uh, pastor. And um, that's the church that I grew up, I grew up. I believe, creo yo, maybe with the exception of Marta, she'll have to c c confirm, I'm probably the only pastor a kick in a show in Dallas. Is that right? Marta, where were you born? Here in Dallas. Yeah, I think you're the only other. Este, um, so, me, me hace sentir muy uh, contento que ahora tenemos un, un grupo nuevo de, de pastores aquí en, en, en esta área. Este, uh, apenas, well, today we're going to celebrate Epiphany, pero apenas acabamos with uh, Christmas. We just finished Christmas. And uh, I believe that everybody has a Christmas story. <clears throat> and um, I want to share mine. <laughs> it's the, um, well, let me tell you first. The, uh, la gente mexicana de Mexico, people from Mexico started moving in more regularly into Dallas around 1910. Pancho Villa was on the rampage in Mexico and people were getting out of Mexico and coming to the U.S. Y uh, venían porque había revolución en México pero también porque había trabajo aquí en, en Dallas. Y en la in 1910, my uh, the paternal grandparents se cruzaron en 1910 y mi mamá, la familia de mi mamá, in 1919. Y se juntaron el barrio de los hispanos, era cerca del downtown Dallas, donde está American Airlines Center. Everybody know American Airlines Center? In the tiempo cuando yo, I grew up two blocks from American Airlines Center. In ese tiempo, esa vecindad era la más pobre in Dallas. The American Airlines uh, sit, uh, site it, when I grew up, was the poorest part of town. Today, it's the most expensive part of town. But there's no little Mexico there anymore. Este, uh, pero ahí fue donde nos, nos creamos nosotros, y ahí es donde se estableció la iglesia de, en aquel entonces, Heinz Boulevard Methodist Church, en uh, 1900. Uh, 24. Todo ha cambiado. So much has changed here in Dallas. And uh, as I've come to meet more de los pastores uh, hispanos aquí, I want to tell you que um, I, I told uh, Rosdani, I remember when we met the first time, it was in, in 1917. Uh, in Perkins, the, we had a, Perkins was uh, having a, a speaker. Era un DACA. A young man in his 20s, I guess, was a speaker. And he was telling us his story. And uh, he started somewhere outside the United States. Y luego his family came to the U.S. and he moved to some town somewhere south of Dallas 
and then he moved to Dallas, and now he was living in California. And uh, <clears throat> I remember I was 17 because uh, Hurricane Maria was going to visit Puerto Rico in a couple of days. And when I found out that Rostani was from Puerto Rico, I said, oh my goodness, that's not good. But Rostani wasn't worried. <laughs> that's what I remember. She said, no, we'll be okay. You know, but because we didn't know Hurricane Maria was going to be that, that hard. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, as I heard the DACA student, he had born in another country, then moved to Texas, then moved to Dallas, and then he moved to uh, California. I felt sadness, but it was him because I was born in Dallas. I grew up in Dallas. I still attend the church where I grew up in Dallas. Dallas is where, you know, hometown. So I had to ask, le tuve que preguntar a este joven, ¿qué consideras tu hometown? What do, you, what do you consider your hometown? And you know his answer, because you all understand wherever I'm at, that was his answer. That's my hometown. Uh, so many things have changed. <clears throat> and I still meet monthly. Mensualmente me junto con otros amigos que se crearon en Little Mexico Village. I still meet with them. We meet every month at Ojeras. Acordándonos de cómo era el barrio en way, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Uh, I still talk to people that went to elementary school with me. So my uh, <clears throat> experience, you know, is very different. The, the you know, today's um, <clears throat> church and society. In my day, <clears throat> mis amigos, compañeros, grew up, got a job, and they stayed with that job all their life. Se quedaron en el mismo trabajo toda su vida. They moved out of the barrio, but they stayed in Dallas. Toda su vida. And most amazing, they stayed married to the same woman <laughs> all those years. <laughs> so, oh, oh, you know. Amen. That's the way it used to be. <laughs> but I'm sure that, you know, you're going to keep the same one. It's the. Uh, <laughs> The Rio Grande Conference. ¿Qué es la membresía de Puerto Rico de la conferencia? Uh, no somos united. Somos Iglesia Metodista, no Iglesia Unida. Oh my. God. So, es diferente. La asociación es diferente con la Iglesia Metodista Unida. La, la conferencia de Rio Grande, at one time, had 18,000 members. That's not a whole lot of members, pero and we were spread out, 18,000, 18, and then it started going down and down, and finally, the, you know, we had to, to merge. But even though we were uh, not big in numbers, some really good things happened because of the Rio Grande. You know that there are three schools in Dallas named for people from the Rio Grande. Did you know that? Maria Moreno, the founder of this church, 
has a school name Maria Moreno. Maria Moreno que estableció esta iglesia, ayudó a establecer esta iglesia, ahora tiene una escuela que en su nombre. Este en la, hay otra escuela que se llama Moisés Molina. Anybody know the school? Moisés Molina was a choir director. Era Manuel. Beloved este, uh, 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 great man uh, reconocido and um, uh, hay una escuela también nombrada en el nombre de, de Moisés Bolina and um, to, unos conocen a Trine Garza miembro de Buen Samaritano en uh, Elmwood una escuela en el nombre de Trine Garza I think that's pretty good I want to tell you que uh, you are helping people find the way to salvation pero you are also este, preparando gente to be good people here in Dallas people in the serve in the community people that help to make this a better place este uh, y todo esto comienza con la uh, cómo tratamos a nuestros niños este uh, we still have este uh, a children's sermon is that right some of you have a children's sermon un sermón para los niños en el culto y tratamos de enseñarles teología y Biblia, y, you know. Pero I believe que en el children's sermon, we need to say, did you make good grades in school today? Were you paying attention? You know, porque la educación es tan importante para nuestros niños ahí, you know, eh, la, The, I, I want to tell you que de la conferencia Río Grande este, han salido tres obispos we were 18,000 but three bishops have come out of the Rio Grande conference did you know that? Este, um, uh, Joel Martínez Well, my college mate is, um, became, is a bishop, a retired bishop de la Conferencia Rio Grande. I'm sure that muchos conocen a Minerva Carcaño, bishop, she became bishop, ahora es uh, a obispo allá en, en uh, California. Y ahora, como anunció Armando, este Rubén Sainz, también salió de la conferencia Río Grande to serve como obispo de la Iglesia General sometimes yo, yo oigo a mis colegas que queremos más representación en la conferencia de los hispanos pero en la conferencia Río Grande pues todos éramos hispanos los superintendentes you know, pero we have about at least a dozen or more eh, personas de la Conferencia Rio Grande que llegaron a servir como staff members de las agencias generales con uh, the, the board of missions with the discipleship uh, I want to mention Dalila Cruz I don't know if anybody knows who is Dalila Cruz 
Pero Dalí La Cruz served as a staff member the uh, uh, Commission on Religion and Race. She worked with the, uh, the women and also with the General Council on Ministries as Associate Executive Secretary. So La Conferencia Rio Grande has produced people that have served the church in general all over the nation. We were 18,000. But some good people came out of the, the Rio Grande. Este, um, out of my church, Emmanuel, uh, at least half a dozen uh, s recibieron el llam llamamiento al ministerio out of my Emmanuel, at least six people answered the call to ministry, including myself and my brother, uh, Mary Lou Bart, este, uh, Raul Quintanilla. So out of this, this, uh, this church, so no éramos muchos, pero some really good people that came to serve the church in general. Este, I want to tell you my Christmas story. I believe everyone has a Christmas story. Uh, usually the focus este, es en el nacimiento de, del niño Jesús y lo reconocemos como el salvador del, del, del mundo. But he wasn't actually the savior already. Todavía no comenzaba su ministerio, todavía no, no había muerto en la cruz, todavía, you know. Pero lo reconocemos como the, the, the birth of the savior, even though he wasn't the savior yet. <laughs> but he was destined to be the, the savior. Pero hacemos el énfasis en, en, en el niño Y uh, luego hay este, the focus, like today, the epiphany, de los uh, Reyes Magos. We also celebrate epiphany and the visit of the Magi. Uh, we can focus on that, following the star, looking for the Savior, all of us. But there's one person that um, I think gets overlooked. Hay una persona que a veces uh, no reconocemos, pero para mí es muy importante. It's the, um, the innkeeper. Do you remember the innkeeper? What is innkeeper in Spanish? Este, um, if it hadn't been for the innkeeper, did you ever think of that? If it hadn't been for the innkeeper, este, where was he going to be born? It was uh, a family, a familia, bueno, el, los, uh, José y María, que estaba para uh, dar a luz y no tenían un lugar donde quedarse they were looking for a place to stay but there was no place for them in the inn anybody ever been there I think all of us have when we didn't know how am I going to survive this? ¿Cómo voy a sobrevivir esto? Este, uh, but there's an innkeeper somewhere that comes to provide for us. I, I want to tell you kind of a sad story. 
that uh, my father, my padre, era un hombre eh, que tenía muchos problemas. He was a troubled man. My father was a troubled man. He was an alcoholic. And he was an abuser. He used to beat up my mother. Terrible. And one night, he came home drunk and started, got mad and started beating up my mother. And I was a little boy like that. And uh, my mother told me, dijo, she thought she was going to die. Mi, mi mamá me dijo, yo creía que me iba a morir. My mother uh, suffered with him. And that night, she thought she was going to die. But fortunately, my father passed out before he could finish the job. Eh, mi, mi padre este, se, de, quedó, se quedó dormido de tan tomado que estaba que no pudo golpearla más. Mi, mi, mi madre, mi mamá decided that she had to get out, get away. And I still remember walking in the middle of the night. Nos salimos de la casa a medianoche, caminando en media calle, looking for a room, buscando un lugar, un santuario. In those days, si tu hija se iba con un hombre, ya no podía regresar. Anybody remember those days? Y mi, mi, mis abuelos no, no aceptaban a, a mi mamá porque se había ido con mi papá. The only place, the only inn in town was the Wesley Community Center. Everybody know Wesley Community Center? It's not an inn. It's not a hotel. It's a community center. Pero ese era el único lugar que mi mamá conocía. Y nos presentamos allí, and they took us in. Nos dieron lugar en el mesón. The innkeeper took us in. Yo creí que era por unos cuantos días. Después me informó mi mamá que allí nos quedamos por unas semanas. Community centers are not supposed to do that. That's not what they're for. Pero Wilina Henry, la diaconisa del centro, took us in. Para mí, she was the innkeeper. I said, pues, come on in. Aquí hay lugar. I think, just my own, you know, calculation, there's at least three people in heaven. Is that right? <laughs> Who's the first one? The guy that was next to Jesus on the cross, I think he's supposed to be there. And I think uh, the second one is Relina Hendry. <laughs> The one that took us in. Nos dio lugar donde pudiéramos comer y dormir y buscar un lugar más fijo, más, más normal. 
I won't tell you the third one when I finish. Still, <clears throat> pero por la community center, por la diaconisa Wellina Henry, este, nos acercamos a la iglesia metodista y la conferencia Rio Grande. That's how I came into contact with the Rio Grande Conference. Because I had no father, my mother, my me, me mama became my father. And the church became my mother. That's where I was uh, <coughs> uh, guided, sustained, you know, um, when I was growing up, probably different from your experience, in Dallas, elementary school, la primaria y la secundaria, I never had a Hispanic teacher. All of my teachers were white, Anglo. I grew up thinking that the smart people were white and the others, us, were, were not quite that smart. We just got to follow the, you know, them. But I imagine that todos ustedes, most of you, had teachers that had your skin color. Is that right? You had role models. But I didn't have a role model until I came to the Rio Grande Conference and we got a pastor, the name was Pablo Calderon, and he had been to seminary, he was educated, he was articulate, he was interesting, he was funny, he inspired me. El pastor me inspiró. And I said, I want to be like him. He was a good uh, role model. We, uh, later I found out that not all white people are smarter than me. <laughs> Actually, some of them, <laughs> I don't know. Pero, este, uh, because of the La Iglesia Metodista, este, uh, I was uh, supported, guided, went on to, uh, to school. Este, my father actually uh, did do one good thing. He did several good things, but one good thing was that one night, estábamos en la casa, and uh, he wasn't home very much, but he came, and we were looking at, some, at an encyclopedia that had, we had found, and we looked up a word, y dijo, este, when you go to college, he spoke good English, he went to high school, Y esas palabras, when you go to college, cuando vayas al colegio, went into my head like a nail. When I got to high school, I had to fill out a registration card, and I went to Crozier Tech, Technical High School, y tenías que marcar college preparatory or technical, and I put college. Because the words that me, me papa, you know, had gone in there. And um, the teacher, Miss Fuller, but I took a seat in the back of the room. And the teacher up at the front went like this. You know, that little finger is very strong. It'll pull you all the way, you know. And, uh, 
She said, I think you made a mistake on your card. Yes, ma'am. What? What? You put college preparatory, but pusiste que vas ir al colegio. Yeah. You're going to college. Uh, yeah. Vas ir al colegio. Yeah. It's a good thing que no me dijo how or where. Because I had no idea, but I knew I was, I was going. It's the, <clears throat> The best friends I have had, been blessed with, were people from the Rio Grande. Pastores, that, as I mentioned, I still keep in touch with, keep uh, in, the, in the fellowship, uh, still serve as uh, my community. Even though now uh, a new community here entre, entre nosotros, este, um, I'm not here to tell you how to do ministry. I'm from another time, another place, another age, you know. But we have some things in common. It's the, uh, the church was going through a great change when I came into the ministry, 63. Este, the United Methodist Church was coming into existence because there were different norms. Había cambios muy grandes sociales en la sociedad y en, y en la iglesia. Pues I would say that today you are going through the same thing. Our church is going through a big debate division, different views, you know, it's a great time, <laughs> it's a good time. Apenas ustedes son los que van a tener que buscar la manera, how are we going to navigate our, our way through? Uh, en la conferencia de Rio Grande, este, um, <coughs> Tenemos una característica. I'm not recommending it to you, but I'm just sharing it with you. Okay, we had a real social awareness, social consciousness. Este, in, the, in, in the 70s, somewhere in the 70s, La Conferencia Rio Grande passed a resolution Okay, we were in support of the farm worker movement. Anybody remember Cesar Chavez? Anybody know who is Cesar Chavez? Este, um, pero ese era el, el movimiento de, la, de los uh, trabajadores campesinos. And, um, Cesar Chavez spoke at our church. He was, a, he was our guest speaker at Casa Emanuel. Este, one of my best friends, Leo Nieto, worked with the Board of Missions. Tenía oficina in New York at 475. Everybody know what is 475? Are they still there? They're not in 475 anymore, but that was the headquarters of the La Iglesia Metodista. And uh, my pastor, uh, Joel Martinez, and his wife, uh, Raquel. Y Raquel is uh, la editora, she's the, the ed editor que produjo este himnario. 25 years ago, este, la Iglesia Metodista recognized <laughs> que había adoración en español. Unfortunately, we don't use hymnals anymore. <laughs> Pero, it, it was what uh, 
the product, the esfuerzos de la Conferencia Rio Grande, that we have this hymnal. Varias personas, it was, a, it was a Methodist church, different people, pero led by the, the Conferencia Rio Grande. Este, uh, en, en aquellos tiempos, también había el movimiento de los caucus en la iglesia metodista. Uh, the um, Black Methodists for Church Renewal, the Asian Caucus, the Indian Caucus, y también teníamos el, el caucus de los hispanos, Marcha. Y Marcha, en gran parte, era resultado de la Conferencia Rio Grande. Se estableció, se comenzó a tratar y a organizar en San Antonio. I was in part uh, este, of that group. En, en, en el año 1970, este, me, uh, me eligieron, este, uh, me nombraron a servir como un staff member de la Comisión de Religión y Raza. Anybody know what is Commission on Religion and Race? Este, uh, la Iglesia Unida apenas se había establecido en 68 y uno de los resultados era la Commission on Religion and Race con una conciencia nueva de cómo tratar con los grupos minoritarios y en la Comisión Religión y Raza le dieron cuatro millones de dólares para distribuir en, en proyectos de grupos minoritarios. So, I had money. <laughs> And I, we received este, proposals de proyectos de grupos de las iglesias y de la comunidad para ayudar a la gente minoritaria y, y en parte yo, yo uh, servía para evaluar y también este, repartir el dinero a million dollars a year. So I was popular. <laughs> I went every, you know, all over California, Florida, Puerto Rico, todo. Este, para distribuir dinero a diferentes grupos uh, minoritarios. So, me tocó servir uh, cuatro años con religión y raza en Washington, D.C., este, pastorear iglesias, uh, ser director de una community center en Houston. Los últimos 15 años, este, como chaplain, capellán en el hospital de Parkland. 43 años en el ministerio, eh, bajo nombramiento. Después de jubilarme, este, buscaban un pastor part-time en St. Luke's La Field. Y me tocó servir ahí en St. Luke's La Field un, un par de años bajo la, la autoridad de la North Texas Conference. So, I did serve in the North Texas Conference for a couple of years. And uh, I, I, I love the North Texas Conference. And one of the reasons I love it, I appreciate it, is because you all have an annual retreat. You all been to the annual retreat de los pastores. Algunos han asistido a la, al retiro de pastores de la conferencia. Cuando teníamos retiro en la conferencia Río Grande, we prayed and we worship and we did spiritual things. Pero no en la North Texas Conference. I mean, you know, you, you do, you have a good speaker, you have, you know, uh, workshops, But you also have uh, an afternoon free. And in that afternoon free, you can do whatever you want. You can go boating, you can go horseback riding, you can go fishing. And uh, 
or you can play golf. So I play golf. And uh, me tocó ser parte de un foursome. I was part of a foursome with uh, Ben Shin. Anybody know Ben Shin? He's one of the best putters in the world. <laughs> oh man, he can, he can, he's a good putter. And I was hitting the ball way out there when that ball was burning. When, when it landed, it was smoking. <laughs> we won first place in the tournament. I got a certificate for uh, first place in, in the golf tournament. It was uh, it was kind of a humorous certificate. It indicated that I had been in the same church too long. That's what it, that's really what it said because you had too much time to play golf. <laughs> but uh, I uh, appreciate your indulgence, your work your service, your ministry, and you know the, the people that I was talking about were actually third, I'm actually third generation Rio Grande. So those people that have become bishops and you know superintendents and uh, staff members, most of them were third generation. But you were first generation in this, in, in the North Texas. Someday, somebody will stand up here and say, do you remember, they were, they were the first, you're the pioneers. Ustedes son los pioneros del Ministerio Hispano. You are the ones that are gonna be up in the, in the first paragraph de la historia del Ministerio Hispano in the North Texas Conference. You're establishing the base. <clears throat> You're setting the path. You're, 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 you're producing the leaders that are yet to come to serve the Methodist Church. I appreciate you, and uh, I wish you every blessing that God can give you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me tell you, uh, the third person in heaven. Please sit down. <laughs> it's the, uh, <laughs> we are we are as the um, the spiritual leaders. The somos los líderes espirituales de la de la congregación de la iglesia. But you already know that there are some people in your congregation that are more spiritual than, than we are. Nosotros somos los pastores, pero hay, hay personas en la congregación que son más, reconocemos que tienen esa santidad. And I'm going to tell you about one of them. Okay, I think she's in, está en el cielo, que era la hermana Samarrón. And I, I usually refer to her as la viejita. She was 80 years old. I'm 85, but I'm calling her la viejita. <laughs> este. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I went to visit her, la fui a visitar. Y cuando llegué a la puerta, when I got to the door of uh, hermana Samarrón, she greeted me and she said, Gloria a Dios. Sí, hermana, Gloria a Dios. Hermano, Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios, hermana. Hermano, Gloria a Dios. Hermana, ¿qué pasó? ¿Qué? Ay, hermano, Gloria a Dios. ¿Qué pasó, hermana? You know, in those days, había food stamps. 
I don't know if anybody knows what is food stamps. La gente que, que no tiene mucho dinero, el gobierno les da estampillas you know, so they can buy food. And ella tenía su libro de food stamps que apenas había recibido, estaba completo. Y fue a la tienda, and the first fiesta store was right there around the corner from where we used to live in Houston. Y dijo, fui a la tienda, hermano. Gloria a Dios. Sí, hermana. Hermano, no compré muchas cosas. No. Dije, ¿para qué voy a quebrar este libro? Why am I going to break up this book? I didn't buy that much. Gloria a Dios, hermano. Sí, hermana. Hermano. Se me olvidó mi libro de estampillas allí en, cerca de la cajera. I left my, my food stamp book there by the cashier. ¡Gloria a Dios! <laughs> ¡Gloria a Dios! Sí, hermana. Hermano, ¡Gloria a Dios! El que se encontró ese libro, hermano, gloria a Dios. El que se you know, the one who found that my, my food stamp book, gloria a Dios. Sí, hermano. No se lo robó, hermano. Se lo encontró. Gloria a Dios que vi. I can't do that. I don't know cuántos de ustedes dijeron, I lost my wallet. Gloria a Dios. No. <laughs> I think she's in heaven. What do I say to you? Gloria a Dios. <laughs> Amen. Okay. All right. Conmigo, gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios.